okay and welcome again. Uh, so if you have been uh, paying attention, uh, the Google Capture the Flag has recently been happening. I'm a little behind everybody else. I actually uh, uh, got into this by watching uh, Live Overflow. Be sure to check out his channel. It's pretty awesome. Uh, which also brought me to John uh, Hammond's uh, videos, uh, which were awesome as well. Check out both their channels. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, you can get my automated scripts at my Git, uh, GitLab. Uh, so gitlab.com forward slash melex1000 forward slash CTF, that's all capital, and there you can download um, my project that has automated scripts for all these uh, uh, capture the flags that I'm going to be going over. So here we go. We're going to go to the second one. Last time we looked at the letter one, which is pretty simple. And we're going to look at the floppy one, which is also fairly simple if you've played around with binary files at all. Uh, we're going to be using binwalk, uh, which I have gone over in previous videos. It's a great tool for pulling apart binary, especially firmware of routers and other devices. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the terminal here. I am going to go into my CTF, Google, and uh, we're doing the floppy one lowercase. There we go. So again, in here I have a script. I'm going to run that script. It's going to run and it just gives you the output of the flag. So you copy and paste that into the Google website and yeah, you did it. But let's look at how all this works. So again, uh, when you click on this project, there's gonna be an attachment, you pull it down um, and then you start playing with it. So um, let's quickly look at my script and what it does. So it downloads the zip file, the attachment you get, puts it in a file called floppy.zip, it unzips it. In there, there's a file called uh, foo.ico, um, which is an icon file for Windows systems. Uh, so we're here we're saying binwalk extract, and it's going to extract all the files from, uh, from this, because there's other files embedded into this ICO file. And this is the first thing I do anytime I'm trying to, well, it's the second thing I do. So normally, if I'm playing around with a binary file and I don't know it's firmware or something, the first thing I usually do is string. String should be installed on pretty much every Linux uh, system. It's a pretty standard tool. I'm pretty sure like even routers and other small devices have it. Um, and uh, let me real quick here, my script cleans itself up after it's done. So let's just make sure that we can get a copy here. So I'm going to download that zip file and unzip it again. And there's our, our file, our icon file. So normally the first thing I do with binary files is just string. It's kind of like cat, but it's going to remove anything that's not an ASCII character. So all the gibberish that you can't read anyway. And, oh, sorry. And we just give the name of the file. And there we go. And then, you know, usually I'll, I'll try to sort dash unique that, and that gives us a limited amount of stuff. So you can see a few things here. You can see if I, that there's something called uh, driver.txt and www.com, and then this UT is probably not part of the name of that, just as it's probably not the part name of this. Now, what we're going to be doing here is um, we want, we can see that there is a file in there, but if there was actually text just laying right there, uh, it would be displayed here. Uh, and we're not seeing anything that says flag or CTF, which are usually the keys you look for. So next step I would do is I would run binwalk, uh, which you have to install. So, you know, sudo apt install binwalk. I have it installed. If you just run binwalk on the file, this is a pretty small file, it should go pretty quick. It's going to tell you what it sees. It says that it sees two zip archives, actually, and then end of a zip archive. So you'd see, you see that there's actually two files in there. Uh, within the icon file, a driver.txt and a www.com. So they're compressed. That's why we're not seeing the text from the text file because it's been compressed and it's binary data and our strip or our strings uh, command is removing all that binary data. But the name of the file still exists in like the header of the zip file. Uh, so again, we run that same command, but with the E, is it dash E or just E? I think it's dash E. The same thing, but it creates a file. Usually it's the it's an underscore, the name of the file that you're extracting, dot extracted. And if we list what's in there, you can see that we have, it, Binwalk does this, and I'm not sure why. It's always, almost always, if not always, creates a zip file 
uh, that is the original file in the extracted. So it's like if you were to look at this, if I was to bin walk um, that, that file right there, you can see it's the same information as filed out there. In fact, I bet if we um, md5 some are food icon file, and this is just a guess that this would work. No, they do actually have uh, different, they, they are technically different binary files, uh, but it's basically, as you can see, it contains the same things. It probably just stripped away some stuff. Um, so, going back to our project at hand, uh, in that file, you can see there's a driver.txt, and it gives you your flag right there. And what we can do is we can, instead of catting it, we can grep for CTF. Oops. And then we can say awk. And what I'm going to do is print dollar sign two, which will print the second column, and that should give us or dollar sign one because it's actually the first column, even though there's spaces before it. There we go. And actually, uh, you could probably do this without grep. Which let's see if I did that in the script here. I did. So I'm here. I'm saying awk search for CTF and then print the first column of this file. So I, I just combined it. I shortened it up so I didn't have to pipe. And then the script cleans up after itself here at the end. So again, our script, we're running it like so. Here it's, this time it's telling me that uh, files already exist because I didn't clean up. So there we go. If we run it again, it shouldn't give us that. So that is the script. That is how you use binwalk, very basics of it. Again, you just run binwalk-e and your binary file. And if there's other embedded file systems, zip files, icons, other things in there, they are, um, you know, extracted. And then you can look through them. And like in this case, uh, there was a compressed copy of a text file and it extracted that for us and we were able to get the text out of it. So again, my website, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris Decay, there's a link in the description. Uh, you can also go to my GitLab page, uh, which I actually need to link on my homepage, because my homepage still links to GitHub, um, but my GitLab, uh, GitLab forward slash MetalX1000, and the scripts for these uh, this video series is gitlab.com forward slash melix1000 forward slash CTF all capital. You can clone that repository and run the scripts and look through them and get a better idea of how things work. Also, again, uh, check out Live Overflow. They didn't ask me to give a shout out, but he does great videos. And I just recently, through him, found John Hanman, or, uh, Hammond. And uh, I've only had to watch a few of his videos, but they're awesome as well. And uh, apparently, uh, he has watched some of my videos as well, which is awesome. I appreciate everyone who watches my videos. So again, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris the K. There's a link in the description, as well as a link to my Patreon page, which I appreciate any support that you guys can give me. So filmsbychris.com. And if we go to support, uh, you can support me, either donate through PayPal or support through patreon.com are the two options now. Um, as always, I hope that you have a great day.